In this video, we will demonstrate starting a Failover Manager 3.0 cluster. We will start a cluster with a master, standby, and witness node, and later add a second standby. I already have EDB Postgres Advanced Server running and have previously installed and set up Failover Manager. When starting an agent, we tell it how to find the rest of the cluster through the .nodes file. Because this is the first agent started, the file can be empty. Now we will start the agent. It doesn't matter which one is started first. In this case, we're starting the agent on the master node. A cluster status check shows that the agent is running. Adding failover manager nodes to a running cluster is a two-step process. The first step is authorizing the nodes by adding them to the allowed node host list. The second step is telling the new agent how to find the cluster in order for it to join. We will talk about the allowed node list first. When a node first starts, it automatically adds its own address to the list. We can add other addresses to the list with the EFM allow node command. After adding a node's address, we can start the agent on that node. Each address to be allowed must be added separately. While this is the general case for allowing new nodes to join the cluster, Failover Manager supports a mechanism for allowing nodes automatically if their addresses are known at startup. This saves time when starting clusters in a more stable environment. We will stop this agent, then set the auto allow hosts property to true in the cluster properties file. Then edit the .nodes file and add the addresses and ports of all the cluster members that we want to be allowed to join. Now we start the agent. We can see from the cluster status output that the addresses are already in the allowed node host list. This saves time when initially starting and can make restarting a cluster easier later if it has been shut down. Now that the other nodes are allowed to join, step two is telling them where to find the cluster. From the cluster status output, we note the address of the membership coordinator node. This is generally the first node started in the cluster. If this agent is shut down or fails, another coordinator will be chosen for the remainder of the cluster. The address is always available from the cluster status output. This is the only address needed for the other nodes to find the cluster, though it is okay to have every node listed. This can simplify your startup since a single version of the .nodes file could be copied to each machine. We will edit the .nodes files on the other two nodes. For one, we will list every address, and in the other only include the membership coordinator node. We can start these agents now, and they will both join the cluster. A cluster status call shows that all three nodes are now in the same cluster. Now we will add a new standby node to the existing cluster. This will be the fourth node total. First, we will run the EFM allow node command to add the new node's address to the allowed list. This command can be run on any node in the cluster. Now we will move to our fourth node and edit the .nodes file, giving the membership coordinator address. We can then start the fourth node and add it to the cluster. The .nodes file is only read when starting a failover manager agent. Once running, the agent will maintain the file to include the address and port information of the other nodes. For instance, the .nodes file now contains the addresses of the other three nodes in the cluster. On our initial cluster node, the file contains the information for machines 2 through 4. If we stop an agent, we can see that its information is removed from the .nodes file of other agents. When the fourth agent is started again, its information is added back. This information is maintained to make it easier to restart a cluster if it is stopped for any reason. When running the EFM stop cluster command, all agents are stopped together and each .nodes file is left unchanged. Because of this, the cluster can be restarted without having to edit any files first. Because we have the auto allow hosts property set, we can start all of the cluster agents without needing the allowed node command. From the cluster status output, we can see that every node we want is already allowed to join. Because each node has every other node's address in its .nodes file, including the membership coordinator, they can be started without any other setup required. A final cluster status check shows that all four agents are running and have connected to form our cluster. This is the end of the Failover Manager cluster startup demonstration.